Well, we've been talking all this week about how do we live out our Christian life in a way that is really reflective of our relationship with Christ. I talked about being all in, that you know, whatever we do, we need to do it with all of our might, all of our energy, that we shouldn't be half-hearted. And even sometimes we need to really be careful about just being distracted. Um, I find that, uh, I found for myself being a pastor that so many times I was so distracted by the, the problems and the issues and the challenges of the church that I really wasn't paying attention to the needs of my family. And I mean, I, I look back on that and I, I can't undo it, but you recognize you did that because you were so caught up. And it, it, and sometimes it can really do that. Your career, uh, you, if you're in the ministry or any other thing like that, it can really, really gobble you up. I've even known guys who just could get consumed with their hobbies. And especially if they become good at it and they feel good because people recognize their skill or ability in that particular area. And suddenly it just kind of takes over their entire life and every decision is being made predicated on how do I further this agenda. And that's not bad in itself, except sometimes it leads to us in neglecting or not doing the thing that we should. Well, we talked a lot about the importance of a wife being submitted to her husband, the idea that she is basically in a trust relationship with him, and she feels, but the responsibility of a man is to make that environment something that is safe for her that she feels that she can trust him, that she feels like he's looking out for her, her welfare and is there to provide for her, to protect her, uh, to, to be not only her lover, but to be her friend. And that's why when, when Paul or, continues in verse 19 to the, speaking to the husbands, he says, husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Now, we know the parallel to this is found in, in, in Ephesians chapter 5. Both these letters were written from prison and they share very similar themes in some ways. It's much more abbreviated, the instructions are here in Colossians. He goes into more depth in the church in Ephesus, and we can only guess that there was a needfulness in that. But we also know that Paul instructed those churches to read each other's letters, to pass these letters from church to church and read them to one another. So he knew that a lot of this dynamic would get covered in greater detail. But this whole idea of husbands loving your wife, it's important that Paul, out of four different words he could have chosen in the Greek language to be translated into our one word love, the one he chose was the one that is often descriptive of how God loves us, this agapao love. And what I mean by four different kinds of love, there's, there is what's called eros love. It's the love of affection. It's, it's often identified with sexual intimacy, but not just only alone. It means that we feel a very strong physical affection for someone. Uh, and it usually referring to a, a, a man and a woman in an intimate relationship. But then there is secondly what's called storge love, and it's basically a, a love of family, that um, parents have a storge love for kids. We love our kids because they're our kids. You know, I mean, it's, it's something that goes beyond even being able to understand. Maybe it's genetic, but this whole idea that these are our kids and we love them, and, and if anything would happen to them, it would be uh, painful, if not tragic. And so there's a love of family that can only be experienced between those who share that kind of family connection, that kind of family intimacy. Uh, but then there thirdly is what's called filial love, and, and it's a love of friendship, that uh, we develop a friendship with somebody. We enjoy being with them, spending time with them, and uh, it's not a physical love. It's not, an, it's not a family love. They're outside of our immediate family, but we enjoy hanging out with them, and they're a lot of fun. But there are the last love, this agapao, or we often call it agape love. Um, Agapao love is, is a love that really exists outside of any kind of natural kind of love. Eros, philia, storge, those are natural kinds of love. Everybody experiences those on one level or to one degree or another. But agapao love is the love that God has for us. And it's a love that doesn't originate from us, but it, it becomes expressed to us and then becomes an expression from us. And I love the way that one lexicon put it. It says that it's based upon, it's not based upon anything that it finds in the person being loved. It's drawn out by God's nature, but not because of the thing that's being loved. In other words, God loves me, and as I try to cast out my mind, cast around in my mind, why does God love me? What is about me that makes me so special that God would love me? And what I come up with is great big goose eggs, zero, nothing. There's nothing about me inherently that God says, you know, I really like you. And then looks at somebody else, therefore, and says, I don't like you as much. No, 
God says his love is unconditional, which means there's no conditions. There's no list of things that have to be checked off before God can love you. That God, who in a sense has the divine storge love, we are part of him, we are born of his family, we are created in his image, and that he loves us inherently, intuitively, and he loves us without limit. And uh, that the kind of love, he says, that a man has to have towards his wife. And he says, don't be harsh with him. In other words, being harsh, being angry, being irritated, uh, being jealous, vindictive, uh, vengeful, um, seeking to pay them back. You do this to me, I'll do that to you. And all those kinds of things, usually expressed initially, at least in harsh words, and sometimes, sadly, even in harsh actions. All of that is out of bounds. The moment you begin to think of saying something uh, unkind, uh, and the moment you begin to think negatively and critically of that person and you've got this in your mind, uh, I want to put you in your place, whatever that dynamic is, you need to identify that as soon as it begins to, a little bubble start percolating up to the top of your brain and you need to look at it and say, stop right now, that's not of God. Satan, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. We have to bring our minds into that kind of discipline, gentlemen, because we have no permission to be harsh with our wives. Under any condition, for any reason, we have no condition to be a justification. I was talking with a, a gentleman who's going through a divorce right now. It's a very, very brutal uh, situation. And yet he said to me, he said, you know, I love this person and I will always love them. I, I could never take them back. I could never, I mean, I'd never, uh, after what they've done, I mean, it's just too much, too far for too long. But I will always love them. I'll love them with an agape love that I have this agape love for them. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, the mother of my children, uh, the, my, my partner for years, and I, I will always love them. I'll never not love them. I just would never be married to them again. In fact, the scripture tends to forbid that in Deuteronomy 24. But nonetheless, it was interesting to me because I thought, you know, only God can do that. Only God can bring you to that place where you're willing to love somebody who is behaving in an incredibly unloving manner, even not beyond just not showing love, but really purposely trying to harm and damage you um, with everything they can muster in them. You find that oftentimes in relationships that people who become incredibly hurtful in a relationship are really trying to escape their own guilt and shame. Uh, they're striking out because they're afraid of what they're going to get. And, and sadly, they will reap what they have sown eventually to their own chagrin. And, and it's funny because even in Proverbs, it says, you know, that when you see your enemy being crushed, he said, don't rejoice. Don't rejoice in that because he says, if you do, God will withdraw his hand of judgment from them. But rather, you should realize that but for the grace of God, there go I. And I don't mean to say that, that we can uh, say that God gave us grace and didn't give them grace, but the reality is we were able not to do that because we grabbed onto that grace when the temptation came. They didn't. They chose to embrace the lie rather than to embrace the truth. And so as a consequence, uh, they're reaping the, the, the results, the fruits of that. And it's just heartbreaking to watch because nobody wins in those situations. Nobody gets ahead. You see, for a husband, your wife uh, flourishing uh, is a blessing for you. <laughs> it's kind of like when I, every year, I, I just remember during COVID when my wife and I uh, came down with COVID and we were so sick. And at that same time, our apple tree was beginning to produce fruit. And to be honest, it's the first time I've seen fruit on it in probably 10 years. And we would go out there every day. I mean, as sick as we were, we'd go out and we'd pick one of those ice cold apples off the tree early in the morning and bite into it. And the juice would explode in our mouths. And it was like, it gave us hope. It gave us energy. It was so refreshing, so encouraging. And I often think about how that when we see our loved ones flourish, it's like biting a crisp apple at the height of its ripeness picking it right off the tree and biting into it and having the juice explode into our mouth. It's one of the few extreme pleasures I think that exist on the planet. And, uh, you know, it's that, kind of, it's that kind of joy and wonderment when you see the people that are most important to you in your life flourishing in your life. We want to see them flourish. It's painful to watch them not flourish. It's painful to watch them wither and, and uh, not become fruitful or joyful in their life. 
because the joy of the Lord is what gives us strength. And when I see you uh, having joy in your life and finding victory, even in hard situations, that's a tremendous blessing and encouragement to me. Well, we're out of time. We're out of week. Um, I look forward to picking up the conversation uh, next week. Go in God's grace as we continue to talk about the relationships of husbands and wives and moms and dads. In Jesus' name, amen.